candidates that they were going to vote for. And we had uh, little or no work to do, except for ensuring that due process was followed, things like checking the names of the voters on the electoral register, and then uh, secrecy of the vote, the ballot, and then marking the terms of the electorate with indelible ink. And that was it. And the people went back home. Many brought, brought their children along. It was a real festival. And my mind went to uh, election 2019. And uh, as I said in my paper, which I'm going to read now, uh, one is a bit skeptical about whether or not we are going to make a success of what I call the experiment. Because the tendency in our country is for elections to end up in the courts, electoral tribunal, and ultimately the Supreme Court. So much recrimination and uh, this distrust uh, for the electoral process. If something is wrong with us in Nigeria, that we don't accept uh, the result of the uh, election. And when you go to court, you know, they believe that somebody knows the judge, or somebody has spoken to uh, the witnesses or whatever. Uh, the man who loses the contest will say, there's no justice in this country. And the man who wins will say, thank God, justice. <laughs> so, as a lawyer, uh, I have problems uh, with allowing the judiciary to determine who represents us. If the elections are free, fair, and of course credible, like uh, Degas added, then we should accept the results of the elections with equanimity. But that is wishful thinking in Nigeria. We still have a lot to do in terms of the consciousness of our people that the electoral process will be adhered to. And once the results are announced, then of course, there's going to be another day. The war will not end on election day. In another four years or thereabouts, uh, you have the opportunity uh, to change your mind. That is the presupposition. One thing I noticed in Madagascar too, because I was part of an international team. Uh, the Europeans were asking for exit polls, because when we met the president of their uh, electoral commission, the European members of our team were emphasizing exit polls. That is when the voter votes, he leaves the polling booth, you ask, who did you vote for? That practice was frowned against in Madagascar. We don't have exit polls in Nigeria either. We don't even have credible opinion polls so that people can make a projection. We are not Americans. We are not in America where the CNN will announce with glee that X, Y, Z is the projected winner of this particular election. The technology we have here is so poor that we cannot announce the results within 24 hours. We still have to wait a day or two, or even a week, before we know the results of the election because of the collision. All sort of infelicities that we experience in Nigeria. Now, I've been asked to speak on the theme election 2019, every vote must count. Let me attention. He narrated to me yesterday, the fellow who paid about 400 naira to attend a political rally in New York, and all he got was 200 naira, so he lost. <laughs> in other words, people would not come to such a gathering. So there was not, nothing for them. And it appears that that experience reflects in my paper. I begin by saying that on occasions such as this, 
one of the bourgeois societies. What he said was, the chance every four or five years for the oppressed to select among their executioners. Or how else should one characterize goings on in contemporary Nigeria, where in conformity with false consciousness, the marginalized and oppressed hail and celebrate their oppressors by wishing them many more years of clubbing them in the head while they themselves continue to waddle in the labyrinth of poverty, squalor, want, and disease. Anyone familiar with our ongoing experience of heavily monetized electoral process will agree that active participation in the bazaar that passes off as elections in Nigeria remains a pastime of the highly healed and very affluent, while the electorate are consigned to being canon fodders, or at best glorified spectators of the macabre game of Russian roulette in deciding their destiny. I was amused to discover uh, the youth that uh, was represented in many of the candidates for the elections here for the, the political system. Unfortunately, she has declined. She said, no, it was a rumor, and that she was not going to run for office. But we need more god women and the young people who will enable us to change the narrative. Now, as I said, the rich dominate the political landscape. And the way things are, that cannot change very soon. It is against this scenario that we are being, we are being called upon today to interrogate the prospects of the country's election in 2019. While we might wish to lay claim to being the largest democracy on the continent, the fact of the matter is that our democratic praxis is strewn with numerous rough edges as to make such a claim akin to a rude joke. Admittedly, we lack the wherewithal to ensure compliance with international best practices, such as clean electoral registers, foolproof authentication process, effective manning of polling stations, delivery of voting materials on time, streamlined collation and prompt announcement of results accompanied by exit polls, requisite election technology generally, and so on and so forth. However, we seem to have reconciled ourselves with the inevitability of electoral disputes and our inability to meet the demands of the rest of the democratic world. Now, we seem to have accepted that there will be disputes after elections and accepted our inability to meet the demands of the rest of the democratic world despite the hordes of international and domestic election observers who are supposed to guarantee safety. Now, I've just been invited to a meeting by the Transition Monitoring Group in Abuja uh, two weeks. And I begin to wonder, all these observers, what is their nuisance value? The Europeans who come, European Commission, uh, all sorts of groups who come parachuting on Nigeria to observe. They write their report, but nobody takes their report very seriously. It's on their own consumption. Uh, from my experience, and it was my first time to be an election observer two weeks ago, uh, well, you can't change the course of things. You, you make your notes, write your reports, they go 
told you what to impress. It's an afterthought, after the event, that the observers will pass their own judgment. I remember what the observers wrote about the elections in Osho, or what they said about the elections in Egypt. So what they say might go to nothing at the end of the day. Because those who want to run to office, for office, they will do their best to overrun and overwhelm the opposition. Accordingly, we just have to realize that the Nigerian electoral process is perpetually in a state of becoming and constantly in need of self-assurance, so much so that what had Nigeria in mind? The kaleidoscope of political leaders thrown off in the country's electoral system is reminiscent of Dickensian England of Tweedledee and Tweedledown. Those of you who are Richard Dickens will recall that characterization elections in England in the 18th century. And when critics now allege that the choice frequently faced by voters is that between six and half a dozen, they are laughed off as disgruntled naysayers who do not wish the nation well. But is that really the case? Well, for starters, let us admit that the largely plastic and synthetic parties have little to distinguish them one from another. They represent the same beer, except for the different labels on the beer bottles. Their members are all well aware of the lack of distinction among them. Hence the rather interesting situation in our country, under which one becomes a member of one party in the morning, and by lunchtime he switches allegiance to another party until dinner time, when he defects, and the next morning, he adopts yet another political party, and the heavens never fall. And just like one of the distinguished members of the audience was announced as one time belonging to the PDP, is now the military member of the LDC. So what else is new? On the contrary, Defectors are usually welcomed with fanfare and aplomb, and thereby informing the entire population of the lack of integrity or differentiation among the political class. The lack of commitment to any ideological position is truly the debate noir, the, debate noir, the black spot of our political parties. When to that is added the fact that the electoral body, INE, has in fact registered 91 parties, the electorate is faced with a bewildering and confounding cynical list of public office seekers, so that they really have little to choose among the welter of candidates. I don't know when, what went through the minds of members of our INE that they decided to register 91 parties. Well, what would the ballot paper look like? They have to fold it multiple times before they insert it into the ballot box. Many people know, of course, that many of the parties are on serious parties. And I have said on TV that we, had, we should pass a law which will put a certain percentage of votes as a basis for continuing registration. Maybe 2%, maybe 5% of the votes. Any party that cannot marshal 2 or 5% of the electorate should forfeit its registration so that sanity can be restored on the political system. <laughs> because now the people are confused. And really, parties don't matter in Nigeria. It's personalities that matter, okay? The Supreme Court will not agree with me, because you remember the case in Rivers, uh, the Amici case. And, uh, what of us just said, Amici's case has one key leg. That is, the, the Supreme Court believes that the candidacy is not for the personalities, but for the parties. And we are yet to 
the sisters. We don't know what will happen. At least we have, I believe, 87 presidential candidates out of the 91. Now, from 87, when push comes to shove, how many are credible? Uh, the young people are saying this is their time, now or never. They didn't have the financial muscle to wrestle with die-hard uh, candidates who have been in this game since before they were even born. <laughs> oh, yes. So what I'm saying really is the young can be optimistic, but the reality of the situation is that out of the 87 candidates that want to become president, uh, many will not gather, will not vote to be reckoned with. Now, uh, I've said here that I'd rather ply the same bar to suit our Malay and expecting an improved or radical turn of events, uh, as Albert Einstein told us, becomes a veritable, a veritable symptom of madness. The madness is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different consequence. So things will not change radically. And now come to the prohibit, pro prohibitive cost of the bazaar. Because we're in the bazaar. <laughs> the amount of financial resources that is deployed to electioneering politics of status and opportunity in relation to running for public office. When to all this is added the cost of logistics that underpin elections, such as hoisting posters and placards, sponsoring jingles on radio and TV, arranging town hall meetings and such like political events, elections in Nigeria are and remain a pastime of the rich and powerful. In the area of Lagos where I reside, the uh, nominee of the party in power in Lagos has occupied all the sidewalk with his poster, and not just small posters, like placards stood on uh, the sidewalk, so much so that his opponents will have no place to put their own poster. <laughs> On my way to the airport, I saw one of his opponents. He couldn't afford the cost of such a uh, placard. So he ended up with just pastry posters on the walls of bridges. So it's an, it's an unequal contest. The man, in fact, the man is going around as if he had become governor. And people say, we are not yet governor. We are just a nominee, a candidate. When the incumbent governor that he threw under the, the bus takes him along, he was with the vice president when they were doing trade money, and the way he carries himself around, it's as if he has won the election. So we are saying, is this possible for somebody to really wrestle me to the ground? He said, look, the governorship of Lagos State is not for sale to the highest leader. So I don't know what will happen. I'm just amused by what I've said. I've decided I will not take the trouble to go and vote for any of them. It's pointless. <laughs> but I don't know the situation in Cross River State, whether all the candidates have equal nuisance value that will enable them oh yes, to get the highest vote. <laughs> it's very important because there is what we call voter apathy. The people might just say, they decided it. What will I go and do at the election? I hope not. I'm just telling you, as a social observer, what I'm seeing. What of sponsoring of jingles on radio and TV, arranging town hall meetings, and such like political events? If you take all this into consideration, elections in Nigeria are and remain time of the rich and powerful. Admittedly, the electoral laws and guidelines put limits on the electoral expenses by candidates. The poor enforcement machinery existing in the country makes such efforts at monitoring and control and a 
five trillion. I think there was a revision of the limit. One million naira for government, five hundred thousand. Who will get that? You know the old Roman uh, Jews, governor. So who is custodian? If so, custodian. Who will get the guard themselves? How are you going to monitor the expenses of the canyon? When in Nigeria, you can pass expenses to so feeding budget, either by your wife, your children, your friends. I noticed again something I noticed in Lagos. This expensive poster that you find on Third Mainland Bridge, they always say sponsored by pathfinders. So the candidate wants to absolve himself of any accusation of overspending. Who are the pathfinders? You don't know who these pathfinders are. <laughs> they are faceless and limbless sponsors. You know, I don't know what is happening in uh, Canada and Cross River State. It's very difficult to impose the limits to spending because many of the politicians they spend cash. So it, it makes tracing very difficult. They don't issue checks, they don't use ATM. Cash. They just carry Ghana must go back to go and settle people who need to be settled. So I'm in such a situation. How do you know who is overspending? I'm saying our electoral laws are deficient because of lack of good enforcement. Not only do the political parties themselves rake in incredible sums from the purchase of statements of interest and nomination forms, the consequence of undermining of the political process is quite frankly upsetting and unsettling. The huge cost of prosecuting political contests puts the lie to any claim that ours was a people's democracy and the earlier we owned up to the reality of the situation, the better for the good health of the country. While it is fit and proper to filter the electoral process by removing frivolous jokers from the political contest, the regulations should not be so stringent as to amount to throwing away the baby with the bathwater. I come now to the end of my presentation, the prospects for 2019 election. According to the theme of today's discourse, all efforts should be geared towards ensuring the sanctity of the ballot box such that every 1922. So Nigerians have been voting since 1922. But the way we are treating ourselves is as if we are novices in terms of voting or selection of candidates and whatever. So we should have a mature democracy, but that is not what we have. However, the existing political situation in the country not to stand up. There is tremendous responsibility on the shoulders of all those charged with the conduct of the elections to ensure fairness, equity, and strict compliance with due process of the law in order to stem the tide of grievance, disillusionment, and ultimately rejection of election results with calamitous consequences for the health of the nation. I may go to say that the future of Nigeria's democracy is on the line in 2019. For if we do not pass the way of the cost of failure in this endeavor, Nigeria is a far too important member of the international community. And that reality I should be brought to the heart and mind of all of us. Because it will do us a lot of good if we recognize the international stature of Nigeria. Now, conclusion or summary. We really can't conclude any discussion on elections in Nigeria. Maybe I should summarize <laughs> The 2019 elections are a trying and defining moment for the people and country. While there is tremendous optimism in the country's future, it must be admitted that this is also a country so richly endowed in both human and material resources, but sadly lacking in leadership and capacity.
to solve its problems and chart the way forward for its teeming population. If we do not want more of the same, we definitely have to change our modus operandi in order to transcend our current difficulties. The limits of bourgeois democracy will seem to have been exposed by the life and times of democracy in Nigeria. A lot needs to be done towards improving the existential conditions of the ordinary Nigerian before democracy can have a thriving impact on the country's political landscape. I mean that the poor and marginalized Nigerians have to be taken care of by the state before they can, before they can effectively exercise their right to choose their leaders. And to attain this end, a deliberate and conscious effort needs to be made to enhance the enforcement machinery of the laws and guidelines of the electoral process. In the final analysis, perhaps we have to share the sentiments of Joseph de Maestro to the effect that the people get the leadership they desire. Accordingly, the people of this country must rise to ensure that the political leaders that emerge are truly deserving of their dreams and aspirations. Only thus can democracy bear true meaning to the young of the people. I thank you very much for that. One more time, let's appreciate Professor Ake. Thank you very much, sir.